Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to Jamie Photography. So today's video is going to look at um, how to deal with difficult objects in your shot. Um, and then I'm also going to take you into uh, a final day to night process of this image. So this, this image here was shot in uh, Rotterdam. Um, it's a beautiful part of the old city of Rotterdam and uh, some, some wonderful buildings there. It was getting dark in the evening, as you can see, 0.5 of a second at F8 at ISO 100, 24 millimeters. And um, we, we were starting to see a little bit of twilight there. Gray sky, so we're going to do something about the sky. We're also going to take a little bit of lighting that started to appear and we're going to boost that and we're going to bring the street lights up as well. But right in the middle of the image, there we go, we have a, um, a sign, a large sign. So we, we've got to look at how we can remove that sign so we can can have a, a really good image. You know, at the end of the day, it, it's it's important that we, 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 we have that sort of depth to an image and we don't have objects stood in the way. And this is an old town look, and this is obviously a modern town, so uh, a modern sign. So what, what I actually did when I was there, I shot two shots. I shot this shot here, which is the, the shot that I want, but I wanted to capture the, the building as well. So I took a second shot slightly to the side so that the sign is not in front of this building, as you can see here. So I'm just going to drop back onto that one. I'm just going to brighten this image up a little bit so it's a similar brightness to the other one there. There we go. So we're going to go 0.3 over, and the other one is 0.4. So I'm just going to put that to 0.3 as well. So, so we've got two images, but this image has, has got a blur of somebody just walking into the frame on the left there, but, it, but the building is clear. So I've got the windows, I've got everything I need there. So the, the real question is, well, how do you take what you have in this image and overlay it to what you've got in this image uh, and, and it look natural? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the process of removing this sign uh, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to see um, how we can develop this into a, a into a, a classic day to night shot. So the first place we're going to start, as you're probably aware, with the new Lightroom 2023, um, there is some new new functionality that's available in in the heel function. Um, they they they're not as good as what we 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 still see in Photoshop. So I will do most of the work here in in Photoshop, um, but but they've definitely improved uh, the content aware function. Uh, and they've now given us uh, a type of clone stamp. I, I must admit, I, I've had a play with it. it. It's not as good as the clone stamp that's in Photoshop, but I think I'm going to get used to using it. And when I have, I'm going to come and uh, do a video to show how how well we can use these tools. But what I can do to start off with is I'm just going to just going to zoom in here. I'm going to hold down the the. Um, sorry, I'm just going to do a zoom in on the center of this screen here. What we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to take this over into Photoshop and we're going to sort this out. So what we need to do is highlight both both images, um, and then with both images um, highlighted, we're going to right click on the display on on the picture here, going to edit in. Right, we're not going to go straight into Adobe Photoshop 2023. What we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to open as layers. So we're going to take these two images and open them as two layers in the same um, in the same Photoshop um, workspace. So let's just uh, pull that into the shot there. That's good. So we've got the image there. Just going to stretch it out a little bit here. There we go. Right. Um, so we've got the uh, the top image there with the sign in front of the building. And if I remove that top image, so we see the image below, we have we have the building there. So what we need to do is we need to effectively cut and paste this across into the other image. So we need to, to, to make a selection here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in to, to make this fill the screen a little bit a little bit closer so we can see exactly where we are. And I'm going to go into um, the polygon lasso tool. So there are different ways that you can you can um, take a selection. You can take a, 
a straightforward rectangle, you can take an elliptical, you can go in and take a lasso tool where you can just draw around, or you can take a polygon which allows you to draw straight line edges. And of course you have the magic wand and you, you have the other tools, but we're gonna go with the polygon lasso tool here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on a corner and we're gonna draw around this, this, this part of the building here and we're gonna use that. So I'm gonna start on this corner here and I'm just gonna draw in and just draw around that edge and draw along a little bit of, um, just a little bit of overhang you can see there. So I'm just clicking as I go, I'm not holding down any other keys. I've just got the edge of the side of that building there, just a little line for the edge of that building. And I'm gonna cut straight through here down onto this point and then I'm going to straight line down the edge of that molding so it's important that we we go down on on a plane surface this is this is the plane surface here so that we get the molding there that you can see on the door I'm going to come down into the pavement there it's going to go along at the bottom and um, and this time I'm going to come inside the edge rather than outside because we've got this window here. So I'm just going to go slightly inside and I'm just going to take that the lasso as we go up. Um, I'm going to include this piece that's sticking out here. Return back into that point there and I'm going to go back up here. There we go and just clicking around the edge of the molding as you can see it there, including that little piece that's sticking out there, just up a little bit, and then I'm gonna return along the top here, and that should take me back to where I started. So I now have a selection of the front of the building there, okay? So the easiest way now is to, to, to take this, this part of the building is, uh, is to effectively just control C, control your command C, uh, to just copy. So I'm just going to do Command C, uh, and as I say, Control C on a, on a Windows machine, and I'm just going to copy that. Then I'm going to go switch the top layer back on, and I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit, and you can see that that is over this way. It's 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 it's, it's actually the building is there, so it's over, over this way. So I'm going to con Command Stroke Control V to paste it, the image in. As you can see, it's created a new layer with the um, with the building frontage in in the, in on that layer, so we now need to make that fit into the space that it was because the perspective is not correct, uh, it's not right at all. Uh, so what we need to do is, is is effectively squeeze that into the right place. Now to do that, we need to go into a free transform function. So um, you can get to that from uh, <clears throat> from the menu here, edit. You can go down to free transform, or you can just hit. Command or Control T, so we can select that. So it's got the image here and it's now available to be transformed. So we right click now and we get a number of options here which we can use. You can rescale it, make it bigger or smaller, you can rotate it, you can skew it, which actually makes it move together in different directions, or you can uh, you can change the perspective. Now perspective might be your fourth, first thought in regards to how to do this, but actually uh, distort is probably the best function because we can move the corners and the centers and it will still keep its 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 actual shape so the first thing I'm going to do before I actually start moving the corners is I'm going to move the whole thing by clicking the hold it and I want to line up these these two corners here so I'm just going to grab the whole thing here and I'm going to move that up so that they just line up perfectly on that corner so that's my starting point if you wish to where, where we want things to go. And now I'm gonna grab the top right corner and seeing that existing line, I want to match this line. So this is where the magic happens. So I'm gonna move that up so that those two lines line up. And then I'm gonna move this across until I stop there for a second. You can see this wall pinning that's here, which is the edge of it on the edge here that we, we cut. So I'm just gonna move that over so it's roughly in the right place and it lines up with that. And we've got the lines lined up along the top. Now a little trick you can do, if you can't see that very clearly, on this layer you can actually change its blending and I tend to use screen and then you can see through between the top layer and the bottom layer you can see there that they're not quite lined up. I can just bring that 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 top one in there we go they're perfectly lined up now on that line there. So 
and then we can do the same whilst we're in this this blend mode we can look towards the bottom you can see where we had that edge there and we knew that the molding was there so you can see we're lining that up on the molding but the molding doesn't line up so perfectly so we're just going to go to the slightly to the right of it and just make sure the bottom of that is lined up just right so I'm just going to turn the screen off so you can actually see for a second exactly what we're trying to do we're trying to take this corner at the bottom here and make it fit within the corner that's already there so we're going to take that over and we're going to place that just there like that and then same with the the left hand bottom corner we're just going to move it out of the way you can see the one below there so I'm just going to grab this box here and I'm just going to put that back exactly where that one was okay now we did have a slight line edge there so we didn't mess up the 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 illuminated window uh, and that seems to have gone in pretty well actually so uh, I'm quite happy with that um, so I'm going to um, command D to undo the selection and then um, should hit return and it will it will go in so that's that's gone in quite well so We've got this top part of the sign and we've got this bit of the wall down here to do and we've got these these uh, mouldings here to join up. That they, they can be done with a stamp tool and we'll do those shortly, this top we can. But unfortunately we don't have a bottom right corner of a window that we can clone from somewhere else that matches. But yes we do because if we go back to the... Um, to the the original drawing where we, we we cut from you'll see we've got the bottom of that that window there now this is this is where it can be quite clever what we're going to do here is going to use the stamp tool on this layer okay so I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to take a, a clone from this bottom corner of this window so I'm going to hold down the option or alt key whilst I'm in the stamp clone tool so I'm in the stamp clone tool here as you can see and uh, hold down the option or key on this bottom corner on this layer and I'm going to take a stamp from there so I now have a stamp as you can see from that corner okay but now I'm going to turn the layer back on right including the the top layer but I'm going to select the uh, middle layer here and I still have that clone from that bottom layer so I can line that up with the bottom of the window corner just there as such and then I can paint that window back in so I'm just going to take it up to the top there so it lines up there we go and I'm just going to go across there so I can paint that other window there we go from the other from the other layer in I can also go to the edge here and just just paint the edge of this sign out and just go along the top of that roof line there just to now I'm going to try to go across into here but we may have to correct it so I'm just going to go across and uh, see if we can paint that bit of the uh... yeah that's just going to go back one on there I'm just going to just uh, just come back up through there so I went back by using the um, the the uh, command Z or control Z to just undo a little bit they don't quite line up so we'll fix those in a moment um, and down here um, we'll have to do that as well but we've done the top window which is what we were looking to do so I'm going to stay on this layer I'm I'm still in the clone tool but on this layer I'm going to take a clone so I want the edge of this brickwork here and I can use this one to copy across if I want to so I can use the optional or key, go to that corner and I can I can take that just in there and uh, just paint that out so we've got that window fixed there and um, I think what I will do is just go up here take another option or uh, clone from that point and just move over and then just come down the side here and just just tidy up the edge of that building there just where we had the overlap there we go so that's that's looking pretty good another clone from here just want to get that little bit of pipe work showing in there that's that the edge there trim same down here I'm going to take a, a clone from here I'm going to come down onto the top of this and I'm just going to draw down 
and just come over to the edge there. And I can always drop down to a lower point, um, press the shift key and draw a straight line, like we've always talked about. You can always just, uh, just take a, a straight edge from there. So um, that's looking pretty good. Just want to do these moldings. So I'm going to take uh, another option or clone stamp from here. And I'm just going to line that up and just paint that through. Just gently do that. Yep, and the same with this edge here. I'm just going to just get that in there like that. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do a bit more detail here because we need to bring those two layers together, the top layer now and this layer. So I'm going to select using the shift key um, so I've got both selected. I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to merge those two layers together. So that building is now in, in, in imprinted on that layer that we have below. And I've just got to tidy up this little corner here. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more, move that to a point where I can see. And uh, we just need to just get this corrected here. So remember, I, I have the, I have the, the um, layer down below. So I can always take a, a, a copy from here if I want to. So I'm just going to have a look to see how we can make that work. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think what I'm going to do, still in the clone tool, we're in this layer here. I'm just going to take another imprint from over here. I'm just going to paint this across just so it works quite well there. I'm going to do the same here. Just going to take take a print there and then just just work my way across that's not particularly straight so I'm going to come back here a little bit and maybe take that one and just bring that one across there we go so that's that's not too bad just take the edge of this wall in here and I'm just going to line the bricks up there and just just get that right as well so and what I don't want is just going to take a, a, a a um, stamp from up above there. Just going to bring that line that up in there and just bring that down. It's not too. Uh, I painted that line there. That wasn't very good. So again, I can take a stamp from here. Let's paint that back in. There we go. And then um, just trying to get the detail. Line the bricks up. Always make sure you line the bricks up when you when you do. You do do that so I'm just going to take this one up here and just just drop that one in down there as well so got a nice sharp edge and then just going to make sure I'm happy with the white the white frontage yeah that's good just got these bottom corners to do here um, just want to get that bit right there that's not quite perfect so Just get that in there, perfect, that's better. Right, just want these edges, so I'm just gonna drop down to the lower the lower um, layer here. I'm still in the stamp tool, I'm just gonna take a, a um, make sure I select it, there we go. I'm gonna select that molding corner there, I'm gonna go back to the top layer, and um, I'm just gonna drop that in there. Yeah, still not, still not, uh, have I got it right? Let's just, uh, there we go, that's not too bad. And then I'm going to drop back down to the lower image and take this, the edge of this, this moulding here, drop that one as well, go back onto the top one, and then just pop that in as well, just to get that edge. So that's finished off, so that, that actually looks pretty good. I think is there some detail up there we need to look at? Yeah, you can just see the edge there. Again, we can we can drop down to the lower level. We can go to the same area here. We can take a stamp of that that edge there. We can go back into the top layer, back into that area. Make the brush a little bit smaller using the square bracket keys to the left of the. Uh, of the enter. So 
Yeah, that's where. There we go. That's better. We've got that sorted as well. So, so there we go. We've got the majority of that that building sorted. It's in there. Looks pretty good actually. Um, we're just going to go down now and do this last part of the post here. Um, so we could use the the clone tool um, to do that. But I, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use the spot healing brush, and and see if we can just heal it out. So I'm going to take the the spot healing brush tool there. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger than the, the post itself. I'm going to start at the top, hold down the shift shift key to get a straight line. And, uh, you know, that did a pretty good job. There's a little mark there, and this is not quite lined up. So we'll just use the stamp tool again. I'm just going to take uh, a stamp from, from, let's get this in the right place. I think I'm going to take it from there. And I'm just going to... Just straighten that, that corner up there and a little bit here as well. This just needs the back side there sorting. That looks okay now. And I think we'll take from here. So I'm using the option alt key to take a, a clone and then I'm just painting that in as you can see that's sorted. So so I think we've we've done reasonably well there. We've we've got we've got it where we want to be. So so whilst we're in Photoshop, um, I'm just gonna turn off the layer behind. We don't need it anymore. Um, there's a couple of things we can use to use Photoshop for, particularly this uh, this spot healing tool to just take away any uh, things that might be distracting. So a small brush, you see that chewing gum tends to be a, a problem in cities. So we can just go around and just uh, take some of the chewing gum out so we don't have um, these little white dots everywhere um, on the on the ground because they're beautiful cobblestones and uh, they tend to get spoilt by people spitting out chewing gum so we can we can just get rid of those using this the, the uh, spot healing brush tool and uh, use the space bar to, to move the image around a couple more over here just a few bits and pieces we'll just uh, paint those out incredible tool spot healing tool is um, I just get these last few bits and that will make sure that we've got no distractions I'm probably going to crop the bottom part of this image out anyway there's a couple of cigarette butts here as well we'll just get rid of those with a white mark there so yeah that looks that looks better so there's a white mark on that stone there as well on, on the um, the bollard right so that's good, and I think the very last thing I want to do is I want to tackle this this uh, alarm box that's up on the wall. So we're just going to go up there, small small brushes, just overhang slightly as you paint round it, and then fill it in. And uh, the spot healing tool is incredibly powerful uh, for removing for removing things. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Tiny little mark there, a little bit distracting. Right, I think we're good. So. I'm going to go to the bottom layer and delete it because I don't need it anymore. Uh, and then what we're going to do is um, we are going to send this back into Lightroom. So I'm going to go to File, Close, and then Save. And that will put it back into Lightroom. So you don't go to File, Save. You go to File, Close, and Save if you want to put it back, back into Lightroom. So there we go. We are back. In Lightroom, just going to turn off the information there, uh, and you can see, by the way, with the information on, you can see that it's been sent back as a TIFF. Um, so that's come back from uh, Photoshop. So we have uh, we have the image as we now wanted. So it's a little bit of work to get to this point, but we've removed the sign, and I beg anybody to to say that they knew that there was a sign there beforehand. So. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the day to night um, process. So bear with me. Always takes a little bit, a little bit of time to get it right. But we're we, we're going to do a, a quick sky um, uh, change here as well because it's a, just a white sky, and we're going to do a, a quick day to night. So I'm just going to recrop this image now. We've come back in. I just want to get that bottom bollard out and what I do like is when you have like a leading line so this step sort of runs back into the corner there I think that always works quite well 
And I'm just going to come over to the edge of that building there where we took that alarm box off. I'm going to hit return. And that's my new that's my new crop. Quite happy with that. We've got lots of leading lines, got plenty of depth in the image as we go through. So um, I'm going to add just a little bit of contrast to the shot, just not too much, because I want to make this line edge uh, for the sky replacement. Um, and then I'm just going to drop down the shadows slightly and bring up the highlights just a little bit. So we've got a nice sharp edge um, to do the sky replacement. So now I'm going to um, I'm going to go into um, back into uh, Photoshop. Um, now I like to do my crops and my changes here in Lightroom. So it doesn't matter how many times you go back and forward into to Photoshop. You always hold the data because it's a TIFF file, you've got a 16-bit file, so you've got plenty of uh, dynamic range. So this time I'm going to go edit in Adobe Photoshop 2023. I'm going to use the adjustments that we've just made. Um, so we go back into Photoshop, here it is, and then we're going to go to Edit, and we're going to go to Sky Replacement. So um, we're going to need to look for a, a, a sunsetty sort of sky. Just going to move this out of the way so you can see what the, what the sky is doing. Um, we can always, I mean, this is a one that's initially come up. We can use that could just make it a little bit more orange. There we go. Um, what we've got to look at is these edges because we've got a bit of a halo there. Uh, so what we can do is we can we can go to fade edge. Um, and you can just jump it from one side to another to look at where where those edges are. So we can do that, and we can shift the edge as well. So we can. You can have more edge coming in or less edge. Um, you see then it goes right across the building. So you just need to find where that balance point is, which I think is about there. The tower is actually being covered, so we'll have to have a look at that. Um, we'll move the edge lighting slider just to try to help that a little bit. Um, I think we'll move over there and we'll do some the foreground lighting just to find where we are. Now we still have a bright patch down the bottom here so let me just zoom in on this this area over here um, so you can see that uh, we've got a, a sort of halo edge and it's bright here and the, this tower is not looking so good. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the refine tool and if you come up here to the, the top left you'll see the, re the refine tool and we can make the, br the, the brush a little bit bigger. Let me get it so we can see it. There we go. And we make it a little bit bigger, not too big. And then what we can do is we can come in along these edges and we can just paint over. And it's refining the, the edge of the sky into the actual bottom image. So um, as I go through, you'll see that it's just refining the edge there. In fact, it looks like there's a hard edge there. So I might need to just uh, move move that down so if I go back to select and just move this guy down there we go um, we can move that around to find what which is the best bit of blue there looks quite nice that's good back to the refine tool and continue to refine these edges here up along there and I'm just moving up to the top right now and um, there we go Make the brush a little bit bigger and then paint back in there so we've got the small again just to come down that edge. There we go. It would seem that the sky is quite bright at that bottom piece there. So now let's have a go see if we can refine over the over this tower here. It's probably not going to work too well. Um, I'm going to do a negative re uh, refine, which is by holding down the option key. And then I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. You can see that the, the, there's a positive, very small positive in the center of that brush. And if I hold down the option key, it turns to a negative, as you can see. So I'm just going to make my brush smaller. And then I'll hold down the negative. And then what we can do is we can try to paint the refine away from the area. There we go. Just working over it a few times. Can you see how that's just bringing that back? So I'm just doing gentle passes to gently bring that uh, tower, bell tower back. I'm going to zoom in a bit more so you can um, you can see. 
what we're doing. So holding down the option key whilst we're in this refine tool and we can we can bring let me make my brush a little bit smaller. There we go. And I'm just uh working backwards and forwards over the area just to take the sky out of the of the bleed over that you get onto the bell tower. You see that just uh Got to keep passing. There we go, we're getting there now. Smaller brush. There we go. So we're just getting the top of that bell tower back in. Make sure we got this nice straight edge here. So I'm just gonna again still hold down the option key. I'm gonna hold down the shift key as well to so I can draw a straight line along that edge as well. Can you see I've just done a couple of passes there um, to make sure that that is, um, is really illuminated. Very good. So we've brought that back in. Now I've let go of the option key and uh, I just want to make sure that I've got that edge run along the edge of the, the tower there with a positive one. There we go. Um, bigger brush again. And just brush away so that's that works well there now we did have a very fine a very 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 fine um, detail sticking up I think there's like a lightning conductor on the top of there but I'm, I'm actually just going to paint that out by just using the refine tool just to remove that uh, as we go through there so if we zoom back out now we have the sky as we want it there's a little edge there we just need to do as well so I'm just going to zoom in just to cover this one here. And just refine that edge. Now the thing is you can, if you're not careful, you can see the refine. Um, it's going to do that one as well. So what you have to do is you have to use a bigger brush. So you make your brush bigger and then you work your way out from what you've just done. Can you see that? So that you, you don't effectively have that sharp line as you come in there. So just gonna go across there and use the negative brush. Remember, you're holding down the option key. Just gonna make this smaller again. I'm just gonna take this off, holding down the option key still, but now the shift key to do a straight line. And I'm just gonna do a couple of passes to get the edge of that window frame back in. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So happy with that. That looks okay. That looks good. Right, so we'll zoom back out again. So there's the sky. We've got that in uh, using um, using Photoshop. Um, so I'm going to um, have it as duplicate layer. I'm going to okay that. And um, I'm going to now there's the, the before, there's the after. I'm going to remove the bottom layer because I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to delete that layer. I'm then going to file, close, save to send it back into Lightroom. So that's just going to go back into Lightroom. So we're doing quite a lot to this image. We've taken the sign out, which took quite a lot of time. We've done a sky replacement. Let's go back into Lightroom. And uh, we now have the sky as we want it. So the next step is to, to darken the image down and do the day to night. Um, I'm just going to deal with this, this little bright area here first. And we're going to do that by selecting a mask, taking a brush, um, having quite a bit of feather, um, half the flow. And I just want to take a small brush and just pick up this area here um, where it's very bright. There we go. And I just want to darken that down a little bit. So I'm just going to lower the exposure a little bit and then bring the highlights down so that the sky behind gets a little bit darker. There we go. So uh, I might even bring that down just a little bit more so it matches. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out again. Now, day to night, we need to to drop the, the the entire lighting level for the whole image so we're going to um 
come out of the mask. So we're going to go into the basic tool and we're going to drop it down by um, about two, two and a half stops. So it'll seem very dark. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put these lights on and light these windows up. So using the, the standard technique that we have, we go into masks, we create a new mask, we go to radial gradient and we put a, a, a radial gradient over the street light. So let's zoom in on the street light. And then we're going to raise the exposure so it's quite bright all the way up. Add a little bit of yellow just to give it a tinge. We're going to subtract a brush. We're going to have z near to zero feather, so 5% feather, 100% flow. Slightly bigger brush and we're going to come in on the edge. We're going to click once, hold down the shift because we're subtracting, remember, from the radial gradient. And uh, we're going to um, just click around on the top. Click, hold, shift, click to get a straight line and uh, click again. So remember, we're using a subtract brush from a radial gradient so that what we're trying to do is remove the parts of the radial gradient that we don't want. So we don't want what over overhangs this lamp. So we've just been around the lamp. I'm going to make the brush bigger. I'm still in that high flow, low feather. I'm just going to work my way around now, making sure you don't go over. If you do accidentally go over like this, then you just command Z or control Z to go back one, spec, one stop. And then you just work your way around. So if I zoom out a little bit here, you'll see that, um, let's go back a little bit to 100%. If I hover over the mask, you'll see where the mask now is. You can see it's in that, but you can also see there's a little bit above it. So we need to just go around and just take out any last that we've got there. So we've started the first step, um, and the magic always comes when you uh, right click and duplicate this mask. Okay, so we now got two of those on top of each other, but this one we make smaller. We make it look like the light bulb that's inside the, the actual fitting itself. There we go. So I actually think we need to make the bottom one a little bit brighter. So we can do that by, we're already at full uh, on, the <clears throat> on the exposure there, but what we can do is we can just... Uh, Take the light bulb out of the way for a second, let's put it over there. And uh, what we're going to do with this one is we're going to duplicate it, the whole mask again. Okay, the mask, not the radial gradient, because we want all the bits we've cut. And the second one, we can we can dim down. So effectively, instead of four brightness, we've now got you know 5.96 brightness, because we've got two on top of each other, one at four and one at uh, two. So I'm just going to pop that back into the light there. There we go. So it looks like the uh, the light bulb is on inside that uh, that fitting. Uh, we're going to do the same with the 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 lamp over here. So I'm going to create another uh, radial gradient, and I'm just going to make one slightly bigger than the uh, the lamp itself. There we go. I'm going to zoom in on that one just the same. Boost it to maximum brightness. Put that in the center. Subtract brush, a little bit smaller brush, and then same thing, we're just going to literally click, shift, click, click, shift, click, just running along that edge, click, shift, click, and just whipping around there to get the outer edges of that, uh, that radial gradient. Bigger brush, so just take away anything's left look at the mask a little bit there at the top you can see so we're now going to duplicate so we get a second one I'm just going to make that slightly not not too uh, not too bright because we want to put a lamp in there there we go and then we're going to right click again duplicate again and this time we're going to select that one and make it into a smaller smaller lamp so it's important that you you come back and have a look um, we'll, accept, we'll accept those for a second um, and just see how they sit and yeah, they're about right maybe this one in the distance needs to be slightly brighter so I'm just going to go in to one of the main masks there and just boost that up just a little bit more there we go so now we've got that in place we need to put some light on the buildings we're going to need to light on the ground so um, we're going to take another radial gradient we're going to put it behind this lamp over here 
like this. We're going to alter it so it's running at the same perspective as the street. There we go. And then we're just going to bring that, that brightness up onto the building there. Add a little bit of yellow to it. A bit too much yellow there. A little bit magenta to take the green hue out. Now what you will see is, is that the lamp itself has got a lot brighter because obviously we've layered another radial grid on top. But that's okay because you can go back to a previous the previous mask uh, and then you can drop down the brightness. And let's just go back to this one. There we go, you can drop that one down and you can even go to the one before because we, if it's really bright. So you can get that back to the where you want to be uh, with the brightness that we've got there. Um, so that, that's fine. That last mask we've done there, I'm just going to subtract a brush and I'm going to put a lot, slightly lower flow, but lots of feather. And I'm going to take a small brush and I'm just going to make sure that we're not getting too much light coming above the light fitting because light doesn't go past the shadow point. So we're just going to put that into darkness there. Great stuff. Right. Then we're going to take another radial gradient. We're going to put it on the ground here underneath the lamp. And the key is we now need to get the angle to suit that lamp. Where would that lamp sit? It would sit probably around about there. So I'll bring up that brightness there. There we go. A little bit of, yeah, of temperature there and some some magno um, magenta and just drop the saturation off just a little bit that's perfect i'm going to right right click that one there right click and duplicate the mask and i'm going to put one under this this fitting here but this one of course is going to go at this angle so it's going to come out this way something like that that's where i think no not quite so bright that's about right. But I do need to subtract a brush you know, with a higher flow rate, maximum feather, and I just need to make sure that we are not lighting up um, this area over here from that radial gradient. There we go. There's a bit of light on top of that, on top of this plant here. So I'm just going to reduce the flow and just bring that down slightly so you're getting some light on these plants here from that light fitting. There we go. That's looking good. I also think we need to bring a light in from the bottom right corner so because as though there's a street light just out of shot. So I'm just going to create another radial gradient and uh, I'm going to zoom out there and I'm just going to pull one in coming in from over here. So as though there's a, a light fitting on, on the footpath just here and um, it's lighting into this shot here. So again, we can just bring up, I'm going to pull that out bit further get the angle just right it's a bit bright and add that color that little bit of color and drop off the saturation just to get it about right so it looks like there's there's light coming in from this this side here that's pretty good so the windows need to be done there is one two three four windows here um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do one of the windows um, and then we'll, we'll conclude the video because otherwise it will be more than an hour long. And, um, and then what I'll do off, offline is I will do those windows up and uh, you'll see that as the main image um, at the front. So um, let's, let's show you how we do this. So again, we go into a new mask, radial gradient. We take a, quite a large radial gradient on this window here. And we need, we need to think about where the light is would be in this in, in this scene here. So it's it's in the middle of the window. So I'm actually just going to pop that straight in the middle there. I'm going to brighten this window up. It's going to pick that right up. Um, a little bit of magenta in there. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of clarity to that shot there, not too much. And uh, what we then need to do is, as always, we need to zoom in. There we go. And we need to sub subtract from this radial gradient a brush, uh, which is going to have a very high flow, quite a low feather. And we're just going to go around this, this, this window now and take away the radial gradient as we go around here. So, so it's not lighting up anything more than what's, what's in the actual windows. So 
just going to take a smaller one because I, I, I do actually want it to uh, to light up in there. I'm going to go underneath the window sill. There we go. It will light those plants up a little bit, and there will be a little bit of light on these. So, just going to take that up. I'm going to add a bit of feather this time now, so I can just go around the bottom of these plants. Because there will be some light on, on them coming from above, from the window. That's it. I'm going to take that feather back down and then cut in on the edge of this, this doorway here along the top. So I'm click shift clicking to get that straight edge. Slightly smaller brush just to get the inner edge there. That's it. Across the top of that one there. There we go. That's pretty good. Uh, zoom out slightly. Look at the mask. So we just need to take the bigger brush and just go around where we've uh, where we've not been. Here we go, just down there, around the bottom here, back up this side, around the top. Just check the mask. Yeah, because you can see it's just on the window and the plants now, which is what we want. So in fact, we can we can even uh, bring down the highlights just slightly on that one and. Um, so you got the, the nice golden effect. Uh, and I'm just going to open up the shadows a little bit in that window there. That, that boosts as well. And pop in a little bit more clarity. There we go. I'm just going to back off the um, saturation just a little bit. Um, so that, that's how you do the windows. Uh, same, same with the one upstairs here. I'll just show you this one. Uh, so create radial gradient. Uh, we'll put one over this window. Now the light fitting is there. You can see it in the window. So we're going to take a radial gradient there. We're going to boost that up. We'll bring down the highlights so we don't mess this up too much. And uh, just back off the saturation just a little bit. Don't want it too much there. And then we're going to do the same thing. Subtract a brush, low feather, high flow. Coming on this window a little bit more. And then take a slightly smaller brush. And we are going to just go around the edge of this window yeah click shift click just to get that uh, there we go on the top of the window now it's important that when you're doing window frames you don't cut in right around the glass you because some light will be coming out from that window and i'll show you how we do that i'm just going along the bottom of the window sill here there we go so take a bigger brush just to do the the paint around Shift click, you can do that as well. Just to take that out, just going to zoom back slightly, make sure we've got all of the overlap there we, are, there we have. So, I'm going to come back in on this window. So, what we now need to do is we're going to drop the flow back to about 70%. Still got quite a low feather because I'm going to take in a smaller brush and we're just going to do the front of these, these window panes, uh, these window frames here. I'm just going to come down. And just bring that in so that these effectively are are darkened down as well. So I'm using a small brush, as you can see, just to go along the edges. Go in the center. There we go. Same with the bottom ones. This is going to go right the way down to the bottom there. So we're effectively just taking out those window frames. Now what we do need to do is darken down these bottom areas. So I'm going to reduce the flow back still further. I'm going to bring up the feather just a little bit. I'm going to take a slightly bigger brush and I'm just going to do click, shift, click along the bottom there just to, you see how that just darkened it slightly and then move down slightly and do the same again. So effectively we're just softening that edge. I'm going to do the same up here, coming up to there, just softening that edge off. Same from there to there. So we've got a, a bit of a blending there. And with this softer brush, I'm taking a slightly bigger brush over the top of the, what we did previously on these window frames and just softening their edges as well, just by passing across. So it just gives us a little bit softer edge. That's looking pretty good. Now we would have a shadow coming across here because this lamp is in here and the light source is there. So we will need to uh, click there and just just create a little little a little bit of a um, of a shadow there. We could even do that again just to see if we can 
You see that little shadow there. I'm just going to run along the bottom here one more time. And we've just softened those edges up. Yep, that's looking pretty good. And that is how you do a window. Now, if you want to make it brighter in there, you can always right click, duplicate the mask, not the radio filter, so that you can you can increase it, double it there, and then you can back the top one back a little bit if you want it a bit brighter in there. You can boost the uh, the clarity in there just to make it good and maybe a little bit of contrast. Uh, and you've got yourself a brighter window. So if I zoom back, as you can see, the scene is, is starting to... Oops, starting to take shape. So I'm going to do um, the remainder of the windows down here and down here. Uh, so that's what you'll see at the beginning, what you start with. Uh, and then I'll just finish off with a little bit of blending of light. And I'll just give you an example of that. I'll take another radial gradient here. This building over here is in the fore, it's sort of in the foreground. So we need a, a light source coming into this. So I'm just taking a big radial gradient there. And I'm just bringing up the, the lighting a little bit over this side. A little bit of colour there, just to just blend that in a little bit. And you can see it just adds a little bit more detail. You can move it around to see where's where's best, where's it best placed. Maybe we place it down the bottom here. And then we take another another one of these. We can right click, duplicate this one, and we can take that up into that top there and maybe light up the the sign here a little bit more. You can just uh Play around with the light levels, just back that off a little bit. There we go. So we're going to do that just to finish this image off. I'm going to finish these couple of windows, and then um, hopefully you'll, you'll uh, have learnt a little bit about how to remove objects and do a day tonight as well. So I will finish this off so you can see it. So I hope you like the video. It's a long one. Apologies for that. Um, but removing that sign was quite a challenge. Uh, so if you like the video, um, please, please... Um, uh, click like and uh, I'd really love you to subscribe to follow my adventure my journey here on on YouTube it, It's certainly great fun uh, sharing uh, all the things that I'm doing here. So um, Just going to do a little bit of a final boost on this 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 image here. I'm just going to come out of these uh, masks Just bring that brightness up just a little bit and uh, Yeah I'll see you in the next video Bye for now.